How's it going guys? It's Mr. Low Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to go and do uh, the second to last mission for me to get all the uh, garage sorted out, and uh, this one's called Truck Store Construction. Again, it's kind of low on the list, but after this I can now sort of start to explore the yellow brick road map. And um, yeah, today I just fancied taking out the P16, it was a bit of an excuse to use that. For the mission I need two lots of concrete slabs, which are two cargo each, and then two lots of uh, cargo containers. So. I thought I'll stick an 8 slot trailer on and give it a go. I'm usually not too keen on the trailer because uh, it gets caught a lot. Um, yeah, I'm heading down that way. There's I can get two concrete slabs from that place and then two cargo containers from there. And then just kind of doing a bit of a lap of the map. Uh, go up some of the highway that's partially flooded. Cross back across, across the river. Once I'm around there, I wasn't sure if I was going to go straight ahead or kind of just back across the uh, terrain to the main way into the garage. But other than that, um, yeah, that's pretty much... The route I'm doing, and like I said, I just wanted to test out um, how well the eight-slot trailer gets across the map. I will henceforth be doing quite a lot of P16 horns. <laughs> it's like an addiction when I drive this uh, truck. Like I said, it's like therapy every time you press that button. Um, yeah, and another reason I wanted to d um, use like the P16 with this combination is it sits quite nice and high, so in theory it um, stops this happening. Because this is why I don't. I'm not usually too keen on the uh, the eight slot. It's that little section there, at like the front of where it steps down. It's got the um, two trailer legs, but they seriously hook into a lot of stuff. And just generally speaking, with the length of the trailer, there's not really a whole lot you could do about it. The only thing I think, even if they didn't change it animation-wise, if the legs folded back instead of retracted up, it might not hook in. But either way, if they just made whatever hitbox is going on on this truck like just kind of like a smooth sheet underneath so it doesn't really get hooked like this it'd be quite nice because in theory I like to attempt the 8 slot trailer particularly with bigger vehicles like this P16 uh, the Colobber B1 I suppose both of them um, but yeah it's just that's the issue I tend to find And uh, yeah, this was just an excuse really to, um, I used the P16, oh no, it was the modded version I believe of the P16 I did the other day on the live stream, so uh, yeah, this is like a, well, fully upgraded, but a, you know, a vanilla, just normal in-game version, and uh, just seeing how well it'd handle it really. And so far, I mean, it's not going too bad, the, the bit where I get hooked there, I will say in its defence, I did jump off a bit of a ledge, I kind of didn't really scout the route or anything like that. Um, I didn't want to risk taking this my normal shortcut way where I go to like the left of the bridge because I've got to cut through some trees and if I have to go on a bit of an angle and all the rest of it like yeah once this trailer starts getting caught up in trees it's uh, I've done it a couple of times before where I've ended up just abandoning the trailer in the trees because it's not even worth <laughs> the hassle trying to get it out of there but um, yeah as you can see though climbing up hills like hell I'm surprised to be honest that was wheel spinning there and the other thing you'll notice with this which it never used to do and I think Basically, every time it feels like they keep dropping the power back a few percent, say, um, I don't know, by now, say you've got 50 trucks in this game or whatever, there's like 30 of them, say, originally felt like they sat above just like the minimum amount of power needed to make the trucks function quite normally, and then the worst ones kind of sat below it. And each time they keep doing it, there's a few more trucks that kind of then drop below the minimum threshold to where... There's quite a few times now with this truck, um, well not loads, but I mean there it was already doing it. Um, the back tyres were kind of trembling and shaking where is I highlighted it quite well, or not me, but the third quarry hill in my review videos kind of show it quite well across all the reviews when various trucks have just like the tyres wobble and shake like there's not enough power going through them. Um, as opposed to wheel spinning, and that's kind of like what that was doing there. There was a bit of wheel spin going on as well, which these are custom tyres, so I can't remember what the grip stats are again. I could be wrong on this, but I think they're like 3.5, which in relation to like the other tyres, I think vary from say 1.5 to 2 maybe, somewhere around there, 2.2 maybe. I, uh, I'm not too clued up on the actual stats, but I think I sort of roughly know ballpark. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I could be completely wrong in saying that. Um, yeah, the reason I could have cut across the... Um, I could have gone straight ahead there, basically, and done this whole lap kind of the opposite way around. The reason I decided to go this way 
uh, with an empty trailer was again I've got to kind of cut through some trees a little bit um, coming up after I grabbed the two slabs and it was just less weight and stuff while I'm cutting across what I assumed would probably be a bit more of an awkward crossing on the river whereas on the way back at least the currents with me a little bit what I should have done there really is swung in there and uh, got some fuel but I kind of just yeah a bit late when I realized that and I thought sorry I can't even be bothered trying to uh, I don't know yeah uh, attempt some funny angle with this trailer So from this warehouse I can get the two concrete slabs. There is um, two concrete slabs available in a warehouse that's like to the north of the map. It's the first warehouse I went to yesterday with the twin stair. I was looking at it, I was considering I could go there, but what I kind of worked out in the end is that this warehouse is near the south of the map and that's kind of the bottom end of this map if that makes sense like the uh, the more to the north of the map you've got the main entrance to the yellow brick road map whatever it's called um, and yeah if there's a mission on there where I need to have two concrete slabs I may as well leave the ones in the warehouse that's like furthest to the north kind of nearest to that um, map itself so yeah I'm gonna start using like some of the materials from the south of this map really if and when that happens. I mean again you can see here it's caught and then the entire rear of the trailer sort of sticks in the air because it's hooked. So not only is, are you hooked on the train but you've kind of you bleed all the power you've got really just trying to lever the back end of the trailer up in the air. Thankfully there was a tree there like one that was uh, properly anchored into the ground. So I kept pulling at least you can just about get away with it with that but just the way the legs are shaped on the trailer the only other thing that I think could I don't know if it'd be realistic or not but it'd probably help is around the front where that step happens where the loaf sat if they put one more axle there just so at least if it's gonna beach that bit of the trailer it's gonna roll on wheels rather than the, uh, the actual legs of the trailer itself And yeah, this P16, I definitely do like it. It's still one of my more favourite vehicles. Even driving it now doing this, it was uh, feeling pretty good. I'd, it'd be interesting to, if they added all-wheel drive to it. Not necessarily... I don't know. It, I'd say it's most relevant now. Like, in previous phases, it's probably not been as much. Maybe Phase 4 with the snowy stuff and all the rest of it. But, especially now that um, sort of another nerf in power if it's going to get to that point where the rear wheels of this truck keep shaking all the time instead of um, actually putting the power down and plowing along then yeah maybe all wheel drive would be interesting but I don't know because the kind of sister truck to this is the P12 and obviously they look a little bit different but roughly speaking this one's not all wheel drive that one is and I don't know, I've sort of said it before where like this has only got two axles, two rear axles to feed power to, so say each rear axle gets 50% of its power. If it was powering three axles, now each axle only gets 33% of the power, so I don't know if losing, you know, 17% of power on each rear axle is worth 33, 34% or whatever going to the front, but it'd be nice to try it and see maybe. Again, I, I don't know, they add some weird things. They did add an engine for the Voron Grad. I just thought, while well, I'm here, I'll quickly save the footage, get it done, change back to uh, the middle of the day. I've seen as well, by the way, a few people in the comments are asking about the uh, the Derry, or that they've used the Derry, or asking me about the, uh, the new engine and stuff. I've not got the new engine yet, because I believe you get it on that yellow brick road map. Um, but I'm going to, possibly tomorrow, I just need to get... Um, onto the game early enough to get like it all done in time but um yeah I'd like to explore that map because there's only there's well there's three watchtowers on there but two of them are like you can just drive to the watchtower and do it one of them is a mission that you have to do and I've looked at the mission and it's quite big <laughs> that's what she said um so I don't think I'll be doing that mission as part of like the exploration video I might just take a loaf and a uh, a radar trailer and kind of do it that way for now, get that done, and then maybe as a mission pretty soon afterwards I'll do the mission where you unlock the watchtower just to get the big massive circle in the middle 
that pretty much uncovers like 80, 90 percent of the map by the looks of it. Yeah, at this point, by the way, I went into this yard yesterday with a twin stair, and I was able to turn the twin stair around, but yeah, I wouldn't particularly fancy trying to turn uh, this trailer around in that yard, to be honest. It was quite a long, narrow yard. There's a lot of stuff. You can see like where the decking goes out into the, uh, the water a little bit. It's kind of all covered in cargo containers and all sorts and little fences, so yeah, if I drove in there straight, I'd probably, in the end, be best off just trying to reverse this trailer out of the uh, the yard. But I just decided I'll, I'll spin it around out here. It's a little bit... I don't know, not my best attempt at spinning a trailer around. But, all things considered, I don't know, it went pretty well. I just clipped it on the edge of that wall as I was going in, but other than that... I've definitely done worse. I know that. Well, well, I can't reverse those bloody ramp flatbeds to save my life. I'm not sure if anyone can. I'm not sure if this game, if it's physically possible to reverse a ramp flatbed where it looks like you meant to do it like that. I was just definitely double checking I need cargo containers. Also, look for a second, like it wouldn't fit. <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but I could. Um, yeah, I tried out the photo mode quickly, just to... I don't really know what I'm doing with it, to be honest, but I ended up getting that little... Well, there's not really a picture, it was kind of like I just then saved the footage. I'm not even too sure how it went on to that, where there was nothing else on the screen, but whatever. I had a little quick play around with it, I'll, uh, I'll keep trying to get used to it. It'd probably be quite handy for the thumbnails, actually, you never know. I'll flick through it then. There's quite a few little scenic pictures I managed to get um, while driving around on this one, so I don't know what's going to be the thumbnail yet. I'll, uh, I'll pick it pretty soon. Yeah, there's like little yellow rails running along the edge there. I got my front tyre hooked on it, so it was like automatically making me poke that fence. One nice thing, I have to say, when I uh, equipped the 8-slot trailer onto this, I know that this truck's like is a pretty big, hefty truck, but it the 8 slot doesn't look so insanely menacing when it's uh, on a truck like this, or again the Colobs are a pretty good one. If you use this with like the Voron Grad, it just looks, yeah, it gets a bit like the trailer overwhelms the vehicle, that's one nice thing with the P16, and I believe the Colobs would be the same. Um, there's enough weight in this truck to where it has more say over the trailer than vice versa, it's a bit like when I was getting it hooked on the edge of those like bits of terrain. I still had the weight and power to be able to leave the uh, leave lever the entire back of the uh, the trailer up. I had to take a bit of a awkward shortcut there, but um, I didn't want to like they put lamp posts on the corner of pretty much every street. And uh, yeah, as I've said, they didn't add this trailer at the start of the game, so I don't know. It's not really been. It doesn't suit a lot of the maps very well. I'd probably say that is the two biggest weaknesses of this trailer. Is uh, yeah, the, definitely where it gets caught on any bit of terrain, like when you go over the bump of a hill. But as well, when you turn corners, it's just some bits are fine. You can go wide enough. You've got enough room. That corner I just cut where I kind of smashed through a car park. I don't think I would have uh, made that corner no matter what. Again, just had to stop for a couple of seconds, like potential. I wanted to loop round, round this way though, because uh, yeah, this is like a highway section for the most part. It's also a little chance to see how well this thing goes through these water sections, because again, the fact that this thing is a pretty heavy truck, it does pretty well to create its own grip on top of the fact that it's got custom tyres, and you see ploughing through here. Lighter trucks would stop already now, but because this one's just got more inertia, and I think with an 8-slot trailer fully packed as well, kind of rolling behind me, was helping. Sadly, I made it through that water in 5th out of 5 gears, I think. And then, uh, yeah, just as I was crawling back out the other side, it lost its guts, which again, I don't know if it would have, sort of pre this update. 
I certainly don't think it would have back in the day. Even there again, it still held a bit more inertia. And then now, this feel, this I'm comfortable with this speed. I don't mind this. I am going with the current. I'm not too sure if I'd be doing the same speed going the opposite way. But I will say though, this truck it's pretty unlikely the current's going to have any effect as far as pushing me sideways and all the rest of it. It's just too much of a fat, hefty, meaty truck. I don't think the, uh, the current's going to stand much of a chance. That was one nice thing, though, about the 8 slot, that it's got a, uh, still got its own little loaf ledge. I certainly can't leave him behind. It is a lot easier, I appreciate it. Someone said it the other day, I think it was on the live stream. Um, just go straight through this section. Like, when you look on the map, the road sort of does like a big bend round to the left over there, but it's really not worth it. There's a... Yeah, you can see all these little rocks on the bottom of the floor. They're not really rocks, it's just where you can actually see the ground, and yeah, it's pretty decent cutting across there, to be fair. Definitely thought today, though, it was a little bit more difficult to get this thing in high range and keep it in it. It's, um... Again, just when you're on this sort of terrain... It's just that few mile an hour off most of the time for you be, for you to be able to stick it in high gear and actually keep it in there. But I will say though, it's still again you can feel it a tiny bit, but not that bad. It was uh, in auto, like in first gear and all the rest of it. It was still making its way through the gears. That's one thing I have always liked about the advanced special. To be fair, it's yeah paired with the right engine. It's always pushed its way through the gears quite a lot sometimes the weaker trucks especially with like a well I suppose probably the off-roaded like if the gears are more spaced apart or whatever um, yeah it you can find yourself stuck in the first out of eight quite a lot in uh, the rough terrain and it just won't jump up to second no matter what again little got caught on the ledge there just and you, as you can see it's not really it's not much of a ledge to write home about it's just any as soon as your truck starts to drop, like your truck drops before the trailer is following you until like the legs just get caught on something. And then now, I just quickly saved the footage again and changed it to midday. And as you can see, I was still looking now like, what am I? Right, I've definitely not got the handbrake on. I'm in gear. I've got enough fuel so it can't possibly be stolen or anything yet. I was looking at the trailer thinking I can't really be caught on anything because it's sitting high enough to where the legs of the trailer. I don't know there, but that's that thing again with the lack of power. That really wasn't a characteristic of the P16 back in the day. I'm pretty sure even when I was climbing up things that you couldn't quite get up in the P16, it'd either wheel spin or you'd just be sitting in an awkward way where it's lifted like the back half of your truck off the floor and that and you're not really pushing down enough to be able to grip anywhere. But yeah, I don't know. that. I'd believe then as well the tyres were doing that thing again where they were sort of shaking and not really moving so hopefully fingers crossed they, uh, they sort it. Overall still feels like a decent truck I still am happy to take it out again especially like if I took a more normal size trailer oh no then again it only gives me the saddle high on this doesn't it so well, I could do say if I did long logs or something in it it's like yeah I think this thing would walk it pretty uh, pretty well there's a little glitch there so like right now though, as I've been a good old time, this is still doing a nice speed. Well, I'm in high low, which I don't mind. Again, I've got a, it feels realistic with the overall there. I'm not going that fast, but I have got an eight slot trailer that's jam packed. I'm crossing a river. I'm in a big fat slow truck, so uh, yeah. Overall, I just enjoy driving, driving, <laughs> driving this vehicle. And then now, just run out of guts again, which feels a little bit earlier than it used to and this is where now I'm saying in theory either they hopefully give us all a little bit of a torque boost again or uh, yeah maybe it's about time this thing had all-wheel drive if that's the case
And it's sometimes it's hard to tell, but I don't believe the uh, legs of the trailer were getting caught there. I think it's just, I don't know, ran out of guts. So, fortunately for me, I had a goddamn professional on hand. So, uh, yeah, jumped him off the trailer, sent him up the hill a bit. Had to uh, bring out the muscle. <laughs> he gets the job done, see? Stick a winch on him, he's off. All that horsepower, it's good stuff. Don't leave home without it. You will regret it. And uh, I don't know why they do this, but you know when you stick a winch to a vehicle in front of you, it turns sharply to the left or right. There's not really anything I've ever found you can do about it. There is certain situations where it's handy. Um, so the loaf just turned to the right there, and then it got to the point where it wasn't pulling against my winch. It was sticking it in forward and reverse because it's now crossing over that point where it's... Uh, I don't know, like perpendicular to me or whatever it is. Um, yeah, stuck under the winch. Oh, by the way, I just I did a quick edit there, but I stuck the roof rack fuel from the loaf into the P16. And again, you can see, um, stuck a winch on the loaf and literally has enough horsepower to pull this vehicle up the hill that couldn't get itself up the hill. And because he started veering off to the left this time, he even got out of the way of the road. So, just to see. Got that horse of a vehicle. Get yourself a loaf, that's what we've learnt from today's video. That would be the takeaway. I know I don't talk about him much, but every now and then he deserves a shout out. Because he's a goddamn professional. And then now, I kind of had the choice to make. I could either go straight ahead and risk it through the trees. I just wasn't too convinced. I thought, sod it. Because when I climbed up the hill on my way, um. I was going a little bit slow and all the rest of it, but at least now, averaged out, I'm kind of heading downhill. So I thought, I'll kill that tree because I wasn't able to on the way up the hill. I didn't have enough speed, so he was on the list. I forgot to mention it, but any tree that's on the list, you don't get off until it's been flattened. Um, yeah, as you can see, overall going pretty nicely at the minute. I was able to carry a bit of speed. Going a bit wider around to the right now because I didn't want to go over those hills in the middle. And apologies, there's a little glitch there, but... It just about glitched as I got stuck. Yeah, I mean, the trailer legs, again, have got caught. And this time, it's kind of lifting the back end of my truck up to the point there's not a whole lot of weight on the rear of my vehicle. So I was trying forward, reverse. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't really working. But I remember trying this a while ago. And it works quite well. So disconnect the vehicle. I think I edited a bit out there. What I did try was creeping forward a little bit and reattaching the trailer that... Sometimes it forces the trailer to jump forward. But long story short, um, drive forward, stick a winch to it, preferably from like, I did it from the front of my vehicle. And for whatever reason, once you've detached the trailer, the legs don't get as hooked into the terrain. So it was able to like, I was able to pull it forward with a winch, but I can't when the trailer's attached to me, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it is what it is, as long as I could uh, get out of there. Plan B was a cause to go back and get the goddamn horse. Drive him over, he'll, he'll get me out of there. He hasn't let me down yet, touch wood. So I managed just to get it into high there, but it was taking a little bit longer. I was quite surprised about this bit now. I hit this section, I'm sure it's here. I mean, yeah, if you need any uh, confirmation that this is at least super snow, if not death snow. Oh, even more confirmation. I even disconnected the trailer. I like... I'm jiggling my uh, front tyres left and right, but because they've got no power going to them, it was just kind of rocking my truck back and forth enough. But yeah, it was uh, pretty much stuck there, to be honest. See, when I just flung a winch out to the trailer, it was still hooked into the train, but if I can use my front winch point to the hitch of the trailer, got it forward enough. All I wanted to do was just get it forward enough so my... Um, I don't even think I got hooked there. It was more of the snow. Which I was now thinking, oh, am I going to get uh, through this section? Already in the high-low, because again, with the lack of torque at the minute, it's um, 
I just have a habit of mashing L1 to make it jump up the gears, so quite often I make it jump up into second gear. And uh, yeah, as it hasn't really got the guts, it'll then stop, auto drop itself back to first, at least with a high low. The revs are like consistent, they're not really going anywhere no matter what happens. Thankfully, it drove through that bit of snow just fine, so I don't know, I either got unlucky with that little patch I just hit, or God knows. I don't even know really if more power would have even been the solution in that case because it was just wheel spinning at that point so yeah it's probably not even that being the issue I was quite surprised it did though as easy as it did especially when I disconnected the trailer as well I'd probably already chewed my wheels into the ground a bit by then but not as uh, not as much of I ha as I have done in the past got some vehicles pretty stuck See, all I care about now is for some reason I have like an OCD about keeping all them trailers lined up, that sideboard and all the rest of it, so I don't care what else I hit, I just don't hit that trailer. Funnily enough, it looked wonky then. The loaf, for whatever reason, every time I reload this map, he keeps uh, slipping off the side of the Mark 38 civilian, but he's still hanging on in there, like a rock climber loaf. Got one for every profession. Um, yeah, so this is the truck store, that's that one in the bag. At least the nice thing was I was able to do this mission in one big round trip, which made the 8 slot worth it. And overall, yeah, I won't be rushing out to use it all the time, but it did what it did. It got it got it done. P16, it got there. But yeah, that's about it for today, though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf, because he's got damn beast, and he saved this. And uh, yeah, I'll be back soon.